shall I fear? just sticks with me because trouble comes in many different ways. Sometimes trouble is in your sickness. Sometimes trouble is in your finances, in your home or your relationship. But just to know that in my time, whatever, whatever my troubles, <laughs> the Lord, he promised, he promised, he will, he will hide me. It always in my time of trouble. That must, it's for me today. In the time of trouble, the Lord makes a way out of way and he hides me. In the time of trouble, he picks me up, turns me around, and yet he hides me. In the time of my trouble. To remember he shall, he shall hide me. No matter how the devil comes, the Lord promised in my time of trouble, he will, he will, he will, he will hide me. In the time of trouble, he got to, he will, he will hide me. Mm. Shall I? 
try to do this right. your neighbor said that was some playing up here today. I can't hear you tell me I said there's some playing up in here today. There's some anointed music in the house today. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all right. They tried to make me scream like a Baptist person. I started to scream out. But I'm so grateful. Hey, man. 
It's so good to be here. And it's so good to be alive in the land of the living. And many folks say they're ready, but all ain't ready to go. And when they knock at their door, they're trying to stay here. Some are running to stay. I'm going to still sing that song. I guess I'll run on and see what the end's going to be. I remember when I was, um, my, when we was growing up, my sister was going to the Holiness Church. And they said they would sing that song. I guess I'll run on, see what the end's going to be. Yes, i run on, see what the end's going to be. And their long white robes. And how she could sing that stuff. <laughs> Waiting in heaven for me. <laughs> That's, I guess I run out. They would sing those songs, and the difference is, is that they knew that they had somebody waiting on the other side. And because of that, those are the songs I held dear to me, although I made much fun of her in those services. But when they would sing those songs, they would minister to me. And she could sing every verse. And they come in their long white robes, waiting in heaven for me. Yes, I run on. And they had their doilies on their head, and they sing till it flipped to one side. And, and they had the high heel shoes on. And she had that tambourine going. She wasn't no bigger than this. And had that big old black belt with that big buckle in the middle of it. <laughs> and so I remember that. And those of you who've been into Pentecostal church, remember those girls with those pleated dresses, with the pleated dresses. And they had the big old small waists with them big old belts around them. <laughs> and so I'm grateful today. And I always say when I come to this part of this message, I'm grateful for her because it was her prayer uh, when she prayed and came and got me to spare my life. And I'm here today. And I always am thankful for that. She had the Holy Ghost. And she would pray. And she could pray in tongues and I didn't know it was that they were calling it intercession, and they would just tell you had the Holy Ghost and to pray and speak in tongues of the Spirit of the Lord or give utterance. And she had it so bad one time that me and my friend Douglas went to church on that night. And I said, I'm going to get what my sister got. But I didn't know you. I was trying to bang it in the pews and pushing my face down in the pew. I said, oh, maybe if I push a little harder, I'll get it. But she was just speaking it so fluently. And to know that all those years she get to hear me tell her, I'm so sorry I made fun of you. Now I'm part of the noisy crew, just like you. I'm going to talk about how a curse is broken. When you get of the how a curse is broken, when you get is when you get rid of the curse. Uh, you heard me talk about a lot of this about our giving and how we give and having respect for how we give our offerings and how we give ourselves. And when we give, we ought to give with a free heart and a freeness within ourselves. I watch as we worship God in our services, and we worship sometimes very lazily, but it's a part of your gift and giving unto the Lord. When you bring yourself as the first fruit is you. I want you to tell somebody, it's me. And so when we come in, we have to come in with a better attitude toward worship. We have to come in with a better attitude toward praising and our attitude of sharing what God is doing in our lives and remembering always if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Most times in the mornings, you'll hear me say on the 6.30 a.m. prayer, we laid down last night and slept with victory. We woke up with victory. We start in victory. And we have the victory. And we shall have a victorious day for the Lord shall give us sustaining victory to keep us throughout our day. When first people heard me say it, they thought it was just a cliche I was trying to make up. I said, no, whether you get an hour of sleep, two hours of sleep, four hours of sleep, and only 40 minutes of sleep, the sleep that you got was your victorious sleep. For the adversary sought to take all your sleep away from you that you would not sleep at all. But God in his graciousness, in the midst of everything that the enemy tried to do, said, watch me give you some rest in your sleep and sleep in your rest. And then for many of us who are dealing with sleepless hours, especially those of us who are growing in the power and the might of Jesus, 
we're also finding out there's a shifting that's taking place. Oh, my God. Please forgive me. There's a shifting taking place in your life. And your body and your spirit is now trying to catch up with each other. Uh, oh, you don't have to believe me, but if you keep journeying, you'll find out that there's some places that your spirit would go that your flesh cannot even tap into. Ah, bah, bah, bah. Somebody ought to give God praise right there. And because your spirit taps into places that your body can't go into, there are many times it's out of sync with one another. And you'll find yourself getting restless nights and only catching sleep whenever you can. But whenever you catch the sleep, you ought to thank God that you're catching it wherever it is. For as God begins to take you to the places that you need to go and line your body, your mind, and your spirit up as one, you will catch up with it in a zone and it will shift you in the place that everything will line up with the word of God. Ah. Every curse has a cause. And as soon as you get rid of the cause, you'll get rid of the curse. Every curse has a cause. And as soon as you find the cause and get rid of the cause, you destroy the curse. And for that, I want you to take a moment, put your hands in the air, and begin to praise him for destroying the cause of the curse. Proverbs 26, verse 2 says, Like a flittering sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause shall not alight itself to you. It cannot find you when you've lined yourself up with the word of the Lord. We're going to take care of it because we're going to understand that as God is doing great things for us and turning things around in our lives, we can look and see that God wants to do even greater things for someone else. Look at your neighbor and say, What he's done for me. He's going to do greater for you. When Adam and Eve fell, they fell and caused a great sin upon the earth that affected everything we did in every area of our lives. As you can look at Cain and Abel and see what happened there. As you move on, you'll find out that God has been trying to get our attention for a long, long time. Somebody say a long time. As he does, he says, you can break every curse off of you by following the things that I give unto you to do. I always start off by saying the first thing is surrendering yourself. Number one, surrender yourself. Number two, allow God to become your all and all. Number three, seek God with a whole heart, with all your mind, all your heart, and all your soul, and lead not to then night to your own understanding. Number four, cause God to get up in every situation by praising him in advance. Tell somebody, I believe I need to take a praise break right here. We already understand that our base scripture comes out of the book of Malachi 3, 8 through 12. And it talks about the things that would happen as we don't even give unto the Lord what is due unto him. It affects every area of our lives. But once again, I say to you that we take that fourth thing that we said, and I want the musician to become in tune with me when I do this, is that we need to take a praise break when I say we're gonna take one. Every so often in the message, I will say it's time for a praise break. All right? Let me try. It's time for a praise break. The reason the first time you get to it and you try to do it, it sounds good, because then the first time you get it, you got it personally. And a personal revelation can go very far. But when you get in a corporate setting, everybody got to begin to line themselves up. And you don't get upset because everything sounds a little bit out of tune, a little bit off. You begin to say, Lord, I thank you because we're about to get into something right about here. 
I'm here with my brothers and my sisters. Uh, and we need some fine tuning as we begin to worship and praise you. I know that as we're beginning to take a praise break, we begin to line up with you. But every time we take one, we come closer and closer to our next blessing. We come closer and closer to the corporate anointing. We come closer and closer to some curse being destroyed off of our finances, off of our bodies, off of our home, off of our relationship. I believe it's time for another praise break. We already understand that tithing is necessary and what it does. We also understand that there are six great things that happen. Somebody say six great things that happen. Now lift your hands and praise them for that. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, I want you to know that God wants to add great things unto you. Tell your neighbor, I can't afford to miss right now. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Now, when I say that again, it's because we understand already that if we give unto the Lord what is due unto him, he shall return back unto us what is due unto us. He wants us to have an attitude of worship when we give. He wants us to come in with a smile on our face. Uh, he wants you to be able to lift your hand in spite of your situation. Because guess what? When you sit in your row, it does not void out the fact that someone else needs your praise. Uh, tell somebody, I know that's right. I know that's right. Oh, uh, if you know it's right, put a praise in the atmosphere. My God, my God. My God, my God. I learned something that as I was getting myself together, many times I would get myself together without giving God his first fruit. Well, what was the first fruit? When I got up in the morning, I would eat, get up, run out the door, say a little something as I'm going out the door, but I was in a hurry for everything I did. But I find myself now getting up, giving God the first part of my time. I get up saying, Lord, I thank you that you woke me up on this morning. I know I got a lot on my mind. for some folk but not enough for me he said bring your first fruit to me before I get on the phone I owe him a conversation I wish I had somebody to go with me over there up in this here place today. Who woke me up this morning? Jesus. Who started me on my way? Who held me in the palm of his hand? All night and all day God had his angels watching over me. Do I have a witness? And I
And so therefore, when I give him my first fruit, see, when people hear about tithing and first fruit, the first thing they go to is talking about their pocketbooks. Let's talk about what we owe him from our personables, from our heart, from the well of our salvation, with a praise on our lips and thanksgiving in our hearts. The first fruit of the day is I owe him a conversation. And as I owe him a conversation that he blesses me after I've said unto him how much I love him, I wake up saying, I love you, Lord. Because somewhere in my sleep, I didn't have to wake up. Somewhere I had a very bad dream and a dream like that took me under. But in spite of the dream, you woke me up this here morning. Oh, I know I got a witness in here. I went to bed heavy laden. Heart may have been overwhelmed. Mind had been just messed up. But I woke up with a new mind on this here morning. The pressure is not like it was when I got up, went to bed last night. I woke up with a less burden on my shoulders and weight in my chest. And for this, I owe you a praise. 